Hi YouTubers, I'm El Gracian from elwapepper.com. I want to do another walkthrough for you today. It's August 6, 2016. This will be my third one for the season, showing you how things are progressing in the garden. And uh, it's been really, really hot for the last few weeks here in western Pennsylvania. It's been pretty brutal for a lot of us. Uh, and it's been hard on the plants too, but I've gotten some excellent produce. I want to show you some of the things that I've harvested, some things that are ready to be harvested, and also share a couple of issues that I've had with some pests. Really my biggest pest this year, I'm going to show you that, which is the squash vine borer. So I'll show you a couple tips for being able to identify this and maybe try to prevent some of the excessive damage that, as it turns out, I wound up experiencing this season. But now I know what to look for and I want to show you too. So let's get in and look at the garden and see how things are looking at this point in the year. This is my curry squash and I'm really excited to see how this thing tastes, to cook it up, but uh, I want to show you the vine that this grew from so that you can see the issue that I ran into. Yes, this is all that's left of that plant. It was a single plant and the squash, if you recall from the last walk there, it had been right there. So I was able to get it to pretty well mature, but uh, at this point, this vine is not looking very good at all. And so as I mentioned, it's those squash vine borers that got in here and once they take hold, oh man, you can just see a complete reversal in plant health very quickly. Things can start to decline very fast. So whenever that happens, you start to see leaves that begin to wilt. And then when you look on the underside of those leaves, you might see a little bit of uh, some debris that's kind of kicked up. Uh, some mashed up food that's just kind of pushed out of these little holes on the underside of the stems and that's where this larvae has gone in and it's begun to just chew through the plant and it can start to chew in towards the core the center of the plant and do some major devastation if you don't get rid of it as quickly as possible but I mean sometimes it may just enter right through the base of the plant and at that point well just hope that you can get some kind of a harvest. Now if you look around at the base of the plants and you see these little specks kind of like brownish orange, well that's your indicator that you have some little eggs. I took some duct tape and I just went through and just picked off. I just pressed it against all these little eggs and I know that that at least reduce the numbers that I still wound up being plagued with but uh, I got dozens and dozens and just doing this in just a few minutes so that's a quick little tip that can help you out with this single plant this is a hybrid which has a smaller spaghetti squash and I did get several spaghetti squashes here from just that one plant that have reached a point of some pretty decent maturity uh, before the vine finally was overcome by that same pest and I'm going to be picking those today but I just wanted to show you how they look uh, before I come in and do that. Now on the other hand this late to start plant has been going crazy. This is my acorn squash that I didn't start as early as the others but now that it's taking off I have two acorn squashes here in this 30 gallon tote they're looking pretty nice and something that is kind of weird check this out I have another one of those curry squashes right here now I only planted the one plant and I mean when you look over here to me that vine looks really dead and all that growth came up here and then it started to go over here over my potato plant and somehow Somehow this plant is still being sustained. I'm guessing maybe that the squash rooted somewhere else. Maybe it rooted in here uh, where my potatoes are. And that's keeping it going so that I'll be able to get another one of these 
squashes before everything's said and done. So, hey, that's kind of cool, right? Over here, I have my single tomato plant, and this thing just keeps pumping out tomatoes like a, a beast. I don't know what to do with them all. <laughs> my oldest planting of corn, we've already been able to harvest some, and that's actually over here in this cold frame. But I did have some transplants that I had put in, and those are now producing ears as well. So they're just kind of getting going. And uh, then there's others that I've already pulled up. They tasted delicious. But this one, this batch, is ready to pick. So I'm going to be coming in here and pulling out these ears today also. So I wanted you to see what this looks like. And then, coming up behind all of that, I have this newest planting of corn, which still has uh, some life ahead of it. It will be maturing a little bit later, so that gives us something to look forward to. I had some broccoli plants here. These things got huge. I wasn't really happy with the productivity from the actual florets that I got. I did get some, but uh, I got way more plant than I got florets, and so finally it was time to just call it a day on those, rip them out, and I'll be pulling out the roots and then I'll refurbish that potting mix, maybe put something else in it here uh, within the next couple weeks. Got a little raspberry here and we do have some raspberries that we'll get from this, which is kind of cool. So here is that tomato. From a different angle, you can just see all of these tomatoes. If you'd seen last year, I tried a little test, wanted to see what would happen if I were to cut down this tomato mid-season, and you know, would it regrow or not? If you had seen that video, well, I didn't do that this year. I just allowed this to just grow, 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 grow. Haven't messed with it, and that's what I have. As far as the rest of the garden space here. I had peas in the spring, now I have beans, and the beans have really begun to fill up this fence slash trellis, especially in this area. I mean, this is a complete wall of greenery, of growth, and we are getting beans that are being produced now. And when we get to the other side, I'll show you a different type of bean, which is really neat, and I think you're going to like that but I'll show you that in a second here. Now, over here, this is my biggest harvest of onions that I've ever had, and these are ready to pull up, really. Uh, on some of these, there it's definitely time for me to get them. But look at look at some of these. This is like it's a pretty pretty nice size nice size bulb. I'm really excited about, especially this variety right here. This variety definitely did the best, and moving forward, that's going to be the variety I'm gonna use in my garden. Most production, that's what I want. Now I did have garlic here, if you'll recall, and rather than leaving that space empty, I was proactive enough to start a canary melon from seed ahead of time, and once the garlic was pulled out, I put that in, I left all three of the seedlings that I had started, left them in there, and so we have three plants that are going to give us a nice little uh, melon. They're already blooming, and so we should get some fruit set pretty soon here. And hopefully, before everything's said and done, we'll have some melons later in the season. But uh, the perennials are doing pretty nicely. Um, this comfrey, I have four of these plants and they're just going insane. I mean, this has been a really great organic matter accumulator that I've been able to use for composting, feeding it to my worms. And this is that Chinese yam, if you'll recall. And it's also called an air potato. I'll show you why. Right here, it gets these little these little bulbs 
these little potato-ish type of things. And so now these are all starting to form on this. Some people call them yam berries. So that will be pretty neat to try these, see what they're like. Of course, you can take those and plant them as seeds to make more of these plants. Now, the big thing that people will harvest is actually a big root that forms down below. That's what people go for as far as the main harvest. But I want to kind of leave that established as a perennial and just try to see what I can get up from the top every season as it should come back year after year. All right, let's break away from this area. And now, look at this, the passion fruit. This thing is pumping out all of these passion fruits. Man, this is really great. And when you see the flowers in bloom, they're really some beautiful flowers too. The pollinators love them. The carpenter bees just go crazy hanging out by the passion fruit flowers. But these are suckering up all through this box. They're just coming up all through here. So I only planted these a couple months ago and I can't even imagine what kind of growth I'm going to see next year. All right. The peppers are doing very nicely. We've been harvesting pepper after pepper and having roasted peppers and stuffed peppers. It's been great. But we now have watermelons. I wound up having five full-sized watermelons. Now some, the variety is a smaller one. I have three that are this smaller size. You can see here. I had to uh, get resourceful in the way that this grew to be able to hang it and suspend it there. And this one's even a little bit bigger. Now this is a different variety here. This is a crimson red, which gets even bigger than this. Uh, I don't understand how this rope has not broken yet. I'm tempting fate by not better supporting this. But check this out. This guy is a full size watermelon. Another crimson red. This is this is, you know, when your family picnic watermelons and this guy's a beast. I'm really looking forward to trying that one out. So, this is what things are looking like from this end. Ah, but what about over here? Remember we had peas here. Hopefully you had an opportunity to see my pea video with some pea testing. But now, we have beans. And I wanted to show you this type of bean. This is a Chinese yard long bean. Now why yard long? Oh, well, let me show you since you asked. Because you'll get these beans that are, I don't know, just about a yard long. I mean, look at this. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty cool. So I have three different types of beans in here. I also have this kind that has a purple bean. See that? And these pretty purple flowers. But I now once again have a nice wall of green here. Helps out with the summer heat. And I look forward to this being the same. My kiwi is slowly coming along. I now have this side, this lateral branch that I'm going to be taking along here while I still have some growth going up this way. And so things are progressing. It's, you know, that point in the summer where it's just, it's just hot. You start to get a little bit tired after a while standing outside and uh, watering and watering and uh, training and pruning and harvesting you know it's that point where you're already starting to think about having a little break and then making plans for the new season i don't know if that happens to you but it seems like for me 
I go through these cycles, you know, where I'm like real excited about getting out there gardening, and then I'm getting into the gardening, and it's great, and stuff's exploding, it's like June, and it's like, oh my goodness, look at this, and then it's like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm ready to have a little break, and isn't that nice that uh, fall comes around and we get a little break, and then repeat, right? <laughs> so that's how things are looking. Well guys, that should do it for today. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, happy gardening.